What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this morning's video, we're going to be talking about some good news that we got regarding the trade war. We're going to quickly be talking about two stocks or ETFs rather that I'm looking to day trade today. And we're also going to take a look at Donald Trump's Twitter, which is where he announced the news regarding the trade war. So for all you guys out there that don't already know, I'm assuming a bunch of you guys already know this by now. The trade war deadline has been pushed back. So for all you guys that didn't know, originally March 1st was the deadline that Trump and the president of China, pretty much the US and China, had to come to an agreement regarding the trade war. And if they didn't come to an agreement, Trump was going to bump tariffs from 10% up to 25%. And if you guys remember, a couple of weeks ago, we actually got news from Trump saying that he was willing to extend that deadline if there were serious, serious um, chances that they were going to come to a trade war agreement. And well, guys, we got a Twitter update about 15 hours ago saying, I am pleased to report that the U.S. US has made substantial progress in our trade talks with China on important structural issues including intellectual property, protection, technology transfer, agriculture, services, currency, and many other issues. As a result of these very productive talks, I will be delaying the US increase in tariffs now scheduled for March First, assuming both sides make additional progress, we will be planning a summit for President Xi and myself at Mar-a-Lago to conclude an agreement, a very good weekend for U.S. and China. So pretty much, guys, he said a couple of weeks ago that he was going to delay these tariffs if there are serious, serious chances of them coming to a trade war agreement. And the fact that he literally just delayed the tariffs, this is some good signs that they're actually going to come to an, an agreement within the next couple of weeks. And of course, guys, this is pumping a ton of optimism into the stock market right now. We can see the futures for the NASDAQ. They're up about 0.85%. Some of the Chinese stocks that I actually follow very closely and that I'm invested in myself, including Alibaba, they're up amazingly right now. This one's up about 2-3%. We can see the big spike overnight. The big gap up here, this one's up around 2-3%. Another one that's doing very well is JD.com. This one was up from around $25.90 up to around $27.50 in the matter of pretty much a weekend, right? Up 5% there. And another one doing very well is uh, IQ. This is another one that popped up from $27 all the way up to around $30. And I do believe I read an article about 20, 30 minutes ago saying that China, they had the best day in the stock market in over, I believe, three years, guys. So just think about the amount of optimism that this and you know this news that we're getting and potentially coming to a trade war is going to do for A, the Chinese market and the U.S. stock market in general. But don't forget, guys, just because China and U.S., just because they're probably going to come to a trade war agreement, this does not mean the stock market is going to surge for years on to come. The economy, the global economy, is still slowing down. And just because we're nearing a trade war agreement, it's not going to change that the economy is still slowing down, right? So keep that in mind. This could push the stock market up here in the short term, but you know, longer term, if we're looking about a year or two out, there could still potentially be, you know, a big downside in the market. Let's say if the global economy does end up crashing, doing very poorly and starting to decline even heavier than it already has. So pretty much today, guys, with this optimism, I'm looking at possibly trading some Chinese companies here at the market open in a couple, uh, in about 20, 30 minutes. And I'm also looking at potential large cap plays in the U.S. stock market as well. We were talking about Square yesterday. Square is up a pretty good amount here. And if we do hold this, this resistance as a new support that I was talking about in yesterday's video, we could potentially fill the gap from about $78 
up to about $81. So I'm watching Square very, very closely. Another one that finally broke out was Natural Gas, guys. Remember I was talking about this, and it played out perfectly to how I wanted for it to play out in order for me to trade it. And for those of you guys that were uh, remembering and watching these uh, videos that I've been uploading over the past couple of days, I made a video talking about Natural Gas on a technical basis a couple of days ago. And if you guys remember in that video, Video, I was talking about how if we break this 270 ish resistance and hold it as a new support, we could potentially fill the gap back up to 290, which is looking like is happening right now, right? We're not filling the gap quite yet, but we're in the baby stages, the beginning stages of holding this resistance as a new support right around 275. And now we want to see the break up pretty heavily up to around 280, 285, 290. And that's obviously going to open up a huge margin on you guys, which is what I'm personally looking to trade. And I actually got a notification. Wow, GE is up 14% right now. Let's take a look at that one very quickly just for fun. GE, holy smokes, guys. This one's up 10 15 up to $12. What happened here with GE? Let's see some live news if I can get something. Oh, GE to sell Biopharma. That's right. I read that a couple of hours ago, actually. GE to sell Biopharma business to Donaher for $21 billion. This could be, you know, what's pushing up here. Uh, let me know down below in the comment section. If you're a GE investor, let me know what you guys think about this. I'm personally not a GE investor, but let's not get sidetracked here. Another ETF that I want to trade today is based off of crude oil. And we see the big pullback today in crude oil, guys. It's down about 2%, down about $1.12 from around $57.80 down to about $55.90. And why I like this one based on the 184-hour chart here, it seems like we're holding this 50S. SMA as a support on this big pullback. So if we successfully push up here, hold this old resistance as a new support, as well as holding the 50 SMA, this one could be a nice bounce back play up to previous resistances at around 57.50, 57.60. And of course, we can continue the uptrend, meaning we could potentially push into the $58 range in terms of crude oil. And what is that going to do? Well, that's going to open up a nice margin of profit here on UWT. So if you're good for for those of you guys that recall, I was actually talking about UWT in yesterday's video, and I wanted to see a pullback in this one, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now. So this is definitely on my radar for today for a bounce back potential day trade right here, and we can already see the green candlestick forming on the 50 SMA. Very good sign that we're pushing back up. So today, guys, I'm watching UWT. I'm watching you guys very closely, and of course, all these Chinese stocks that really did very well due to this optimism with China and the U.S. coming potentially to an agreement. So let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about this? I would love to know. Good luck today on trading, guys. Hopefully, hopefully all you guys do very well. I'll be in the Discord chat. Hit me up there. I'll see you guys soon.